Alrighty, it's time to jump on the bandwagon. We have just begun the year 2022. I'm hoping I can still edit and get this video out in January. <laughs> and that means we've had one full year as the bandwagon. And I really liked last year my video talking about my new name and also what I hope to achieve in that year. So I would like to do another one. I'm not changing my name though. So I thought it would be fun to look back on what I accomplished last year and let you know what I'm hoping to do this year. Now I want to get out of the way the negatives first and talk about what I didn't like, what I did and did not do last year. Basically, I didn't like that I wasn't able to do everything that I was hoping to do at the beginning of last year. And in all honesty, if not having the time to physically work on stuff is my only issue from last year and I've probably done pretty well. I started a new job last year and now I have chipped away at getting myself the perfect roster and schedule now. So that now makes me realize I do have usable time to get things done and I would like to make the most of that this year. Be a bit more structured, have a bit more allocated time every week to be able to do something. So altogether I put out nine videos last year and I'm pretty happy that out of those nine, five of them were songs and that is definitely what I wanted to work on and have more of going into 2021 because I feel like 2020 and earlier than that I sort of lost putting music out. I wasn't putting out as much songs and music I felt. So I am really happy that of the videos that I did put out, more than half of them were songs. So that's, that's pretty great for me. <laughs> I think working on the screen recordings and putting up songs that I'm just playing from Sibelius, the program that I use to write music, I think that's definitely helped because sometimes it's just fun to write the music. And that allows me access to use instruments that I physically can't play. So I've got a lot more in the vault that can eventually come out. My favourite video that I put up last year, 100% is gonna be The Hunt. Like, I have loved that song for so long and I've been so, like, passionate slash determined slash, like, annoyed that I don't physically know how I can, like, get this song out there. And the Sibelius screen recordings have helped me get that done. Eventually it would be nice because I've just got such a specific visual idea of that song and what's going on. It would be really nice if I could do drawn cartoon slash silhouette, you know, panels for the entire song. I have drawn up a little storyboard up until when the wolf kind of makes its first attack. I've, I've got a bit of a draft of what the scenes I want to look like are. But it's going to take me a long time because I'm struggling to do the deer and also that uh, thumbnail, that one screen, that took me like 10 hours to do. <laughs> like, I, you got to understand, I'm mediocre at a lot of different skills, so sometimes things take me a while. <laughs> but I am super happy with the, the look of, you know, just that one panel of the hunt is. The scene in that is based on this little kind of like a valley or something near my place. So I really wanted to make it bright and have all those colors there. And also I learned from another YouTuber, Lavender Town. She was talking about, I can't remember the proper words for it, but taking into consideration people who are colorblind and how to pick your colors so that if you looked at it in black and white you can still see color differentiation and you don't have them the, the tones I guess looking the same way so as I was doing the coloring for that I was trying to make sure that yes I could still see what everything was when I turned it to black and white so because I would also like to do a couple of drawings of the bandwagon ladies I would like to try and make a palette and like, you know, make all their colors, you know, have that, uh, you know, look to them so that I don't have, I guess, clashing colors or colors that look the same. So I'm not sure how long that's gonna take me, but now that I'm aware of that thing from a art and drawing and color perspective, it is something I would like to take into consideration. 
That's also why I'm trying to put subtitles on everything now. I would like to try and put in the effort to make my videos and content as accessible as I physically can, that I have the knowledge to do. So that's kind of my 2021 self-reflection done and out of the way. Now I want to talk about what I hope to do in 2022. So definitely at the top of my list is being able to practice my instruments more. I don't remember the last time I practiced an instrument. I think I was practicing the instruments that I needed to use for my recent songbird video. That also was fantastic to finally get out and finish off last year with. Working on that for so long and I did a dang decent job and you can't tell me otherwise. But yes, I definitely want to be practicing my instruments more. I've got pretty regular start time for my shifts at work. I've got an hour and a half before every shift where I can work on this. So I'm really going to try and make use of that. Uh, one of the things in line with not liking what I did last year. I made a cloak and I made a video of how I made that. I made it for the Barossa Medieval Fair in, you know, last year, 2021. So I was hoping on putting that out last year. Sometimes it doesn't work like that. There was a lot more video footage than I was anticipating, but I thought, you know what? I'm not gonna care so much about that because I liked that it was pretty much a step-by-step -step of how I made the cloak. Also, the subtitles did take me a long time to process, but I was able to get it done because I was using that time I had before I worked to work on it and just chip away an hour, half an hour at a time just to make sure I was working on it and I was getting it done. And I felt really good about myself for doing that because then I was getting it done and I was really happy that I was working on it and getting it done. If you've seen some of my posts on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, Tumblr is the other one. No one follows me on Tumblr though. I'm now putting the hashtag chipping away on things because I've also decided to not make myself sad by thinking, oh, I didn't get this done quick enough. Oh, I should be working on this more. Oh, I should have gotten this done faster. No, I'm not doing that to myself. Because I'm going to keep telling myself that the only way that I can fail at what I'm trying to do with, with the bandwagon, with my hobbies and such, the only way I can fail at doing that is if I just decide I don't want to do it anymore and I don't do it. Like, as long as I want to do it, try and find time to work on it and then you know do a little bit at a time then I'm still doing it and that's good I'm not gonna make myself fret with some make-believe timeline that makes me feel like I have to get it out now I don't back to the other thing I do think I have I've definitely got the time to yeah chip away on and work on things a lot more so I don't want to be playing instruments and making noise too early and waking the boys up. But I definitely do have, you know, a half hour window where I can make use of playing and practicing my instruments. So definitely playing more instruments is something I want to do because it would be really nice if the songs that I'm practicing, I can put a video to that and just show, you know, like what I'm working on and what I'm practicing. Because I bought a new bass last year and to celebrate that, I grabbed one of my old drum books and tried to just play through a couple of things just to, just to practice something. And one of the first things had a drum and bass duet. So I learned that and was able to work through them pretty well. So when I got my new bass, that's what I made the video of, which the thumbnail should be there. I should be smart and be doing that. That was pretty good. That was heart wrenching because I think it took me 15 minutes to record the drum part and it took me like two hours to get the bass done because I was just not playing it perfectly and oh my goodness like I had to have a break I had to have a cry and then I got back to it about half an hour an hour later and then I think it still took me about 20 minutes to finally get that last shot that I got but I did it I did it but yeah I think it would be cool if when I practice my instruments, there's potential I can make a video of it and then maybe show off the ladies individually on their instruments. The one that needs the most work is the violin, but I think I need 
new strings and new and a new bow but more so like the, the bow hairs sort of thing so that's been putting me off to make the effort to get those fixed but yeah violin's hard it's it's my seventh instrument and it's definitely the hardest I took some group lessons over the years and I do think I need private ones to really help me improve and because then the teacher can focus solely on me and what I'm doing and then you know correct me immediately and get my form good I don't know when I'll have the time for that if I get new strings if I get the new bow strings then at least I can still practice and maybe find some tutorials on YouTube to help progress that because I'm not gonna be able to use it if I can't play it the clarinet also needs to be worked on because otherwise I just can't breathe properly I can't get the notes I really liked how when I was practicing it a bit more a while ago I went back to a song that was getting difficult for me when it got to the higher bits and then I played it and I was like almost easy and I'm like oh, I've improved and of course I want to play drums more because drums is my favorite but more practice is definitely what I want to be doing this year also something else that I think has improved and I've gotten better at is my vocals <laughs> Yeah, going into the music and the band stuff, I was never, I was never supposed to be singing. I was, I wasn't really supposed to be doing vocals, but it just so happens that now I am doing my own songs and some of them have singing involved. But last year I mentioned that I think I've gotten better. So I would like to do some vocal updates on the original songs that I've done previous years so that happy moonshine and monster equals evil because i think i have improved in my vocals so i don't think people are going to want to listen to my music if i don't have nice sounding vocals so i think if i can update those and yeah re-upload them with you know my my hardwood sort of background thing and then also put lyrics or subtitles on the videos as well I think that might help me have more people listening because sometimes I look back on it and I think oh yeah you know the nah the vocals the vocals aren't that great so that does make me nervous because I think people put on a much higher pedestal how well someone can sing and I find I'm pretty lacking in that skill but I think I've improved so if I just do a new vocal track, keep all the instruments the same because I think the instruments are fine, then I think that might help people be more interested in, in my stuff if I actually sound good. There is another original song that I have done and that was Make a Tree. I'm not gonna do that because the piano and the vocals I just played at once so I so they're in the one audio file whereas the other ones each instrument and vocals they're on a different audio file so I can just change the vocal track on that and that'll be fine now that songbird is finally finished the full version the full band version of make a tree is what I want to be working on for my originals I'm really excited about that because I like how some of the songs that I've got and I haven't done anything with for years I'm able to now mold them to sit mold them to suit my bandwagon ladies a bit more and actually give them like character backstories or just character stories involving the ladies themselves so monster equals evil I just wrote and then I sort of thought wouldn't it be cool if I actually had a monster for it and then of course I you know <laughs> went and made got Louis made and then I thought okay I'm doing this oh wouldn't it be cool if it was actually one of the ladies background like what if it was a background um, a backstory for her and so then I made it part of Nesta's character and then that gives her a reason to leave her village and be out in the world of Dananda to meet all the other ladies and then make a tree it was kind of like okay well a character has made this robotic or mechanical tree oh well crazy lady's an inventor like she she does that like okay this this can be this can be a crazy lady song this 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 works because there's another song that i don't know when i'm gonna get out but that's also kind of crazy lady's intro song because that's when i say need to remember the lyrics now but it goes something like this 
Once there was a magical land, it was filled with myth and adventure. Then one day Deja cursed the land with lines hooked up with lasers. The lines were a prototype for a crazy lady's endeavor. So yeah, <laughs> I got inspiration for that song after going to Medieval Fair for the first time. Also in my cloak video where I'm actually showing all my photos at Medieval Fair. I did a screen recording of that so I could get the music to put it as the background of all my photos. So keep keep an ear out for that when I... I would really like to get the cloak video done and put up in February. So hopefully it's soon. <laughs> Back to the original topic. But yes, make a tree. I'm not going to do a vocal update because I would like to put the full band piece together. That's what I want to work on now. And it's good because... I noticed it doesn't actually have a chorus. I don't really have a chorus for Make a Tree, but I've added a third verse, which I think kind of makes more reference to Crazy Lady a bit more, and I think helps it make the song them, <laughs> them specific, whereas the lyrics before, it was just talking about making the tree and what it's going to look like. Now it brings the humans and those involved and what they're going to do with the tree. I've got a little bit of tweaking with some of the stuff, some of the parts and some of the notes. So I do have a little bit of work on that I need to do before I start practicing. But yeah, that's that's what I um yeah, want to be working on the full version of that. And the scariest thing about doing the vocal updates is I'm going to be brave. <laughs> I'm going to be very brave. I have been listening to Triple J for the uh, last year, I think 2020. I started listening to Triple J and I really like them because there's a lot more range of songs and music that they play that I really like. Also, they have this thing called Triple J Unearthed. And from what I gather from it, you can upload your own songs and there's the potential for them to play it. So I'm going to be brave, and when I've done the vocal updates of my songs, I'm going to I'm going to put out put it up there. I'm going to yeah, just put it up on Triple J on my earth and see what happens. So that's something I'm nervous about doing, but something I would really like to do. And I am I am going to do it. <laughs> so yes, I'm going to be very brave. The other brave thing I want to do is I'm a musician, and what do musicians do? They perform in front of people. <sighs> now, I will say, I'm a, I am a little bit worried about what COVID-19 is still doing right now. There's a lot more cases back in SA and that does have me a little worried. But the biggest thing that I am hoping to achieve for this year, like I want to do the vocal updates, but more importantly, I have been at every single steampunk festival that there has been. So last year I kind of assessed what was there and I sort of thought ah, I should have put my hand up to do some busking. I think in 2019 I did ask about being a roaming ukulele player because in previous years my friends and I, who were who I was in bands with, she brought her ukulele and we would just you do a couple of songs along the way. And so I thought it would be really good to try doing that myself. I didn't end up doing it because I was I was scared. And then I also was very stressed before it, so I didn't wanna I can't remember exactly why, but I was very stressed around that time and I didn't I didn't wanna do that extra thing of putting pressure on myself. And I did see last year for the 2021 steampunk festival that they were asking you know for stalls for musicians and buskers and all of that and i said to my boyfriend i think i'm going to do it and he's like okay but do you really have time with everything else that you're doing do you really have time to put together a performance and stuff and i was like i don't i don't and so i said okay i'm gonna focus just on building my new look for the bandwagon and next year I will try doing that. And again I do think um, Steampunk Festival was kind of a little small, there wasn't 
that much entertainment, I don't think. So I think seeing that, I was like, yep, I'm gonna get myself ready and I'm gonna be one of the people doing things. I have worn Saya quite a few many times at Steampunk Festival. So I think that's gonna then have a little bit of merit to say, oh, I'm the one that's always been doing, you know, this character that's been around. I also have, I now have something I can offer to the, the festival. So yeah, I've been, I've been thinking about what I can do in regards to covers and originals so that I can, you know, make myself like, hopefully maybe a 20 minute repertoire or something, of a 20 minute performance that I could possibly do at Steampunk Festival. I think that would be nice. So yeah, so I think the major thing that I want to be doing is performing at Steampunk Festival this year. Back to what I was mentioning with COVID-19, I'm very worried about lockdown somewhat and events not happening. And just a side note, I'm finally getting my first avatar tattoo. Good morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm being a good girl and working on my stuff. Oh. Mm. Yeah, no, like, like that's important. Hey, Mr. Stanley, yeah. what are you doing? You're being silly. Mr. Stanley, come here. You want to be a star? Oh, what you got? Oh, thank you. What you got? That's Stanley. That's my sister's grey hat. I'm looking after while she's away. What you doing, Mr. Stanley? What you got? What you got? What you doing? No. Oh. <gasps> Did you get it? I'm going to remember to talk about the avatar tattoo. We're going to take a temporary break and we'll be back to you in a jiffy. <laughs> Good boy, Stanley. Good boy, just lie down. So we're back, but I don't remember what I was saying. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, COVID-19 right now is making me a little bit nervous after eight years of trying to figure out what avatar tattoo I was going to get. I'm finally booked in next week to get it done. I'm really worried it's not gonna happen. The people I've talked to are pretty sure that we're not going to go into lockdowns, but if I prepare for it and it doesn't happen, that's fine. But if I was still able to get my tattoo, I should be able to put it up here somewhere. But yeah, I think back to the previous matter at hand, I would like to be brave and hopefully if Steampunk Festival can still happen this year, I would like to put my hand up to do some busking slash performances. I think that would be really good because then I can actually perform in front of people and I might be good at it. But that is half a year away at least so there's not much point me thinking about it now too much but I do need to practice, I do need to prepare. And I have also had the thought of, okay, well if Steampunk Festival can't happen, maybe I'll do a, a green screen thing and do my performance and then have the background be like wooden, um, wooden panels of like on an airship of like Saya coming from Dananda to do the performance, but we couldn't leave because of COVID. So she's just doing the performance on the airship on the way back. So, that could be fun. That might be cool. <laughs> and so leading up to that, something else I would like to do is keep doing some world building of Denunda. I have made a map recently on Incarnate. Incarnate is super helpful because you've basically got all these stamps that you can choose from to make your thing and it's just so much easier that I don't have to physically draw it all out and everything. The areas and landscape that I've already thought of I think I would like to keep it in the top third 
of the map maybe I was thinking about being the top half but then I thought no I want because Australia is pretty big I do want to mimic that so the areas that I've already thought of where all the ladies are from I want that to kind of be like a third yeah the top third of the map and then I can fill in the rest of that when it's relevant or not at all yeah I don't know it's a little bit more effort than necessary but I do kind of like the idea of you know just having made a world having made a map having made you know a country slash continent of where everyone's from and you know creating a world that they're part of that I can make everything make sense in I've booked some holiday time off next week which then made it the perfect time to get my tattoo because I essentially want it to be an alternate Australia slash steampunk Australia kind of world I'm trying to find inspiration from real world, real world stuff so a lot of my magical creatures I'm kind of having in that I decided I would like to have it in a timeline um, not necessarily timeline but I would like to make use of Australian megafauna and have them a bit more commonplace because interestingly enough so I've created Louis I'm trying to do like a little comic or drawing of the ladies and when I got up to drawing Louis I thought I would bring out my original drawing that I made of him and of course his legs and arms are a little bit longer he was a bit taller and bigger and then I looked back at him with his little legs and little things and I was like ah he almost looks like a baby <gasps> what if he is a baby and then I was also figuring out oh what if Louis is a type of megafauna and also coming in with the thought process of if Louis is a baby originally I wanted the monster that finds the girl or finds Nesta to be huge like I wanted it to be able to carry her in like its its arms slash its little pincers and stuff so it needed to be huge if Louis is a baby and I have megafauna then that works that fits and I brought this up in my Nesta outfit update plus bandwagon lore video that when trying to make my werewolves or warrigals as I'm calling them that's the breed type I've decided to call them trying to find more dingo facts to create them from as opposed to just originally I just tried to find wolf aspects so they're kind of gonna be a bleeding of wolf and dingo um, things because Sayers eyes are wolf influence and I'm not getting rid of those I I'm keeping those it's my fantasy little world I can do whatever I want with them but learning that there was a relationship between Aboriginal people and dingoes made me realize and made fit from the song I've written about my origin of werewolves I realized ah I need to I need to incorporate First Nations people like Aboriginal people into the story and of course I'm very limited in my knowledge because I just I just don't I just don't have that knowledge so I would like to be good and find inspiration and understand for myself and also for the hopes that I would like to have like the avatar has inspiration from different Asian cultures to make the four nations I would like to find inspiration hopefully from Ghana people because I live in Adelaide which is in Ghana country I would like to do the same and have both the Warrigal tribe that Say is from and also a couple other um, tribes or mobs um, with Ghana influence in Dununda as well so while I've got time off I would like to I think when I was originally looking up stuff we do have I think we do have a specifically Ghana museum and history thing so I would like to pay that a visit COVID does have me a bit worried but I think with the information that I want to know about 
you know, I'm even having trouble finding information on megafauna as well. I think I need to go to museums and learn a bit more. One for my own personal knowledge of just being aware, but also, yeah, I feel like uh, I feel like it's upsetting because I was like, I only want to learn about them because I'm selfishly like making it for my own world building. But I'm also kind of like, well, you know, like I either use it for my personal selfish reasons or I don't learn about them at all, or and like don't include them at all, which after realizing how well they would fit with everything that I've already done, I would I had the thought of, well, if I don't follow through with this, then I'm whitewashing my own story, and that's not something I want to do. But yeah, I need to do information sourcing with hopefully real people that I can talk with as well and get, you know, not first-hand knowledge, but, you know, talk to an expert and, you know, an actual, I don't know, doctor or professor in in that field sort of thing and just yeah just really learn from someone who has who has that knowledge um and then I can specifically ask them questions about aspects that I actually want to use a bit so yeah I would like to yeah so to help world build Dananda a bit more I think it's time for me to make at least one or two museum trips to do some learning and I think it would be really cool as well because what's what's really been helping me work on the world building and stuff is I I am obsessed with the NP NPC D&D &D by Viva La Dirt League it's, it's my obsession it's my addiction right now and yeah it's been it's been very helpful for me to work on my stuff because I'm I'm an idiot and when I'm watching them play their scenes I'm like what would how would say interact with this group like how would say interact with this new world sort of thing so she's in uh, is it Azarim that their NPC world is in and I'm just like oh what, what would what would say think of all of these things that she's seeing there and then I'm playing this game called Death in Space, which is very similar to D&D, but there's a bit more looser on the rules. Like there's not as much dice rolling as you need in D&D. So one of my friends is the DM for that. So I'm hoping that by the time he said he's got X amount of campaigns that he wants us to go through. So I also really want to prep for stuff and then do a uh, Dananda and Dragons with my friends and I think it would be really cool if I can make Dananda and then make like a D&D campaign for my friends and then they can play throughout it and then I've figured out a campaign that I've got to do like I've, I've mentally thought about it um, and yeah and I've put all of the characters all of the ladies in there and I'm like yeah I'm not gonna be true to the ladies uh, backstories exactly because I just want them to be part of every single campaign just somewhere along the way and so thinking about Dananda in a potential D&D campaign it makes me wonder well what kind of creatures would they then come across in different places so that is fun to think about and that's yeah, I, it's, it would just be another way for me to be able to use my world and like bring it out and uh, kind of play with it with my friends. And then I'm going to have some song references every now and again and one of my friends is like, so it'll be like a have you been paying attention sort of thing. <laughs> but yeah, I really like how I think my best ideas for the bandwagon I think are when I'm not really thinking about it when it just sort of happens. I was talking to a friend from archery that I hadn't seen in a long time and I was telling her about where Nesta is from, Aviastom, and how it's very sheltered. There's kind of tricky terrain and a bit of, you know, a distance to get out of that to the next place because also the monsters are kind of aggressive uh, there and so it's it's very dangerous more so because there's just so many monsters that can get you 
And then she said, well, how did they get there in the first place? And I'm like, never mind about all that. <laughs> Because, yeah, uh, straight up, I'm going to be lazy in some aspects of it. It's kind of like, this is here. Like, don't don't question. Like, don't don't worry about that. But then, yeah, my friend was like, well, what if the monsters got aggressive because the humans were there? And I'm like, that makes sense. That makes sense. Because what I would like Denunda to be is I don't really like when we tell stories about how we've lost the magic in the world because we've modernized. The magic's strength has been lost because we're modernizing. What I would like Denunda to be, because I do have, the colonization of Australia is a big influence, I guess, and starting point of Denunda, because I want it to be like, the colonizers have come to Denunda but the magic of the world and Denunda, the magic of Denunda is fighting back. I've only so far thought of about kind of three major um, modern uh, towns or settings um, in just in that top third because I thought, well, maybe that's that's only as far as they've been allowed to occupy because the capital city I'm going to have, Uekstad, I want that to be, yeah, very like technologically savvy and modern in the way of steampunk modern. And then there's the smaller town called Doxton, which is where Gurley is from, which is where the tavern or pub that she lives and works at, the Port Barrel pub, that's where that is. So that's a bit more of a, a sea town and that's that's basically where everyone comes in from. And then however far along, Uekstad is a bit more inland sort of thing. And then that's really built up. And then the rest, and then I thought, oh, maybe they need like a train somewhere to get them from, you know, Doxton to Uekstad to maybe like a mine. I just, I, there's a Netflix documentary called, I think, The Magical World of Oz that I watched and they had their dingo section and the dingoes were hanging around a mine, wherever that was, and I thought, ha, huh, I'm gonna have a Warrigal mine. That's what I'm gonna do. So I've got this mine pretty close to where um, Warrigal territory is. And so I sort of thought, okay, you know, you know, maybe the, you know, maybe, um, yeah, so it's kind of, Dananda has to, there's the colonizers that came and then of course the generations that have passed so it's so I want Denunda to be a a mix of magic and modern have to live together because there's still the thing of the modern wants to take over but the magic still has too much power that they can't take over as much as they want I do want it to be somewhat common for different kind of creatures to live amongst each other because that's just a nice fantasy world that I would like. Can't remember what I was saying. I keep rambling on. But yeah, so in regards to the modern Denunda, I've got Doxton, Uekstart, and then a train line that connects the, those two and then connects it to a mine that is, you know, however far away. And then that's kind of as far as they're so far allowed to go, I guess. I don't know what's happening with the rest of Denunda. Maybe nothing. But right now, it's not relevant. But I do have a lot of ideas with everything. It's just chipping away <laughs> and figuring out what I'm going to do with those and how I'm going to make sense. And yes, like with my other video, my bandwagon lore video, I think picking bits of inspiration from real world things I think is going to help it be believable and also a little bit familiar. So if it so happens that I get to a point, you know, it would, I'm still, I'm still obviously a very small channel. So there's, there's the hope that, you know, maybe, and because I stretch myself out to different aspects you know 
There's little bits and pieces that some people might like more than the other. You know, because then there's also the fantasy of, oh, maybe if I get their background stories and their characters built up, maybe I can write a book. Maybe that's a thing I can do. Because <laughs> <sighs> I've got so much time on my hands. But, you know, there's potential for me to expand things. And thus there's potential for people to like different things of what I've done. While it is stressful to try and study and research and look things up, it is quite exciting for me to find something and I think, oh, I can make this work somehow. Like, I can't remember when it was. Uh, I think I watched a video on Bunyips by Monstrum. I think that's the category of the YouTube series Storied. And they mentioned the description of Aboriginal people of Bunyips is pretty close to a megafauna can't remember if it's the right name but Diprotodon I think and then I thought oh well maybe I can let me have a look at megafauna basically one thing spirals me into leading on to another thing and that's how I've basically been able to put everything together so from learning about that I wanted to, I was interested in this bunyip video because I do have a song that's not even half written about a bunyip just because Bunyips are cool, you know, Bunyips are interesting, although it's very annoying because there's not exactly a set description of it. There is a Bunyip in Murray Bridge which I sort of thought maybe I'll try and make it be like that, but then watching that Bunyip video, yeah there was a different type of way that they were showing that and then I thought you know what I'll just make up my own like I'm I've made Lewis up <laughs> like I can make up the bunya so I've, I've got an idea of how I think I would like my bunya to look because then I referenced my song and what I wrote a bit more but anyway ah, once again I forgot what was I saying looking up megafauna I found this video and it was just going from smallest to largest and naming all these megafauna and one stuck out to me and then it could be just because of its name and it its look looks kind of rat like to me and I like rats so I thought hmm what's this and also its name was Andrew Sarkis and I thought that would be a pretty cool character name <laughs> so with Saya I kind of want her to have like a like a, a a boyfriend that she's in love with but also they both but they also kind of have like an open relationship so they can kind of like do whatever they want with whoever they want when they're not around each other but when they're together you know they they're they're together sort of thing and then I was like hmm maybe this Andrew Sarkis can be the name of say his boyfriend so I still need to figure out exactly what that guy's deal is going to be. Haven't really thought about him too much, but he, he exists. <laughs> but yeah, gosh, um, I think I'll leave that there for my plans of 2022. So yeah, I'd, I'm, I'm thinking about a lot of stuff. I think at the end of the day, if I were to give myself a, oh, I wish I could get like, I want to put up this many like videos in however long of course some of the YouTubers that are successful enough that they can just be doing their YouTube work and doing their videos because of the content they're putting out they're able to put out pretty much one video a week and I sort of thought about that and I was like no if music is if music and songs are my focus then I don't really have time for that <laughs> So I think it would be nice if I would be able to achieve as close to one video a month. I still don't, I don't think that's achievable, especially since I still have, I've got a permanent part-time job. I'm lucky enough to have scored, but like what I was saying, I think all the way at the beginning, I'm not going to make myself feel bad for not getting a video out quick enough. So it would be nice. I mean, last year I had nine videos out. It would be nice if maybe I could do 
yeah one video a month so 12 a year or even even 10 would be nice yeah I would have been able to get my cloak video done but I was waiting on I got a photo shoot done at the Barossa Medieval Fair and so I've just been waiting for my photos. So of course I was one of hundreds of other people that that person would have taken photos of that day. So, you know, it's not gonna be quick for her to process um, like me specifically. And and yeah, so I, I asked her permission when I got it, um, if I can, you know, obviously put her in the, in the credits and um, show some of the photos that she took of me in my video for making the cloak. So I've just been waiting for her to give me my photos and everything so I've done what I can but I'm just waiting I really want to have those photos that she's done of me because they look fantastic they look so good I'm definitely going back to her in future but I think I think next time if I make something and then get photos from a photographer at an event I'll just make a post of um, the photos they took of me whenever I get them so that if I'm doing a video I'm not waiting for my photos to come through because it's they could have had hundreds of people that they've taken photos of and have to go through so I don't want to be I don't want to be an annoying client to like pressure them to get mine done like as soon as possible I, I don't want to be an annoying person but I'm hoping to get my cloak videos out in February because it does not matter how long it takes me to do a thing as long as I do a thing and enjoy doing it. But yes, thank you for having a listen if you're still here to my, you know, 2021 review of myself and my plans for this year. Because I think it will be interesting to do one next year and then be able to say what I was able to ch achieve from what I was hoping to do. I think it's just a good a good chance of reflection on me and I think that yes even though I wasn't able to do everything I did intend on doing last year I'm still happy with what I've done like I'm still really happy again getting the hunt out just is so important to me like uh, I put it out on my birthday like it was it was my special gift to myself of finally finally getting it out there but yeah it's time to bring this bandwagon to a halt. If you would like to follow me, I've got YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr, and DeviantArt. If you want to check out stuff that I get up to, Facebook probably has the most information and updates. And at the end of the day, my videos might not be perfect, but if they were, I wouldn't be a mediocre musician. Alright, see you next time.